Yellow Telescope's Yellow Telecast, the best practices for the best practices, providing the medical industry's best practices to the medical industry's best practices since 2008. Are you a doctor? Do you work for a doctor? Do you want to earn more, be more efficient, retain your team, hire for success, or just want to have a better lifestyle? I bet you do. What should you expect from the podcast? A lighthearted, casual, fun, hopefully funny, informative, impactful, well-founded look at the medical industry from a pair of impassioned, competent, confident, experienced, talented, questionably good-looking, unquestionably good-looking industry leaders, men of the renaissance, if you will, and even if you won't, who have hired, trained, and overseen some of the nation's top medical practices while enjoying Scotch whiskey, world travel, Travel, music, single malt, scotch whiskey, fine dining, not fine dining, family, art, Ryan bourbon whiskeys, and maintaining an absolutely perfect track record of growing practices by between 100000 over $1 million within the first year every damn time. Listen to the podcast, and for more on how Yellow Telescope can help grow your practice, visit yellowtelescope.com for upcoming events, published articles, recorded speeches, past issues of our complimentary email newsletter, testimonials, and more. All right. Well, well started, yeah. Welcome to the Yellow Telescope, Yellow Telecast, best practices for the best practices. Uh, Ed Searing here with my partner, John Hoffenberg, uh, coming to you live or recorded. This is pre-recorded. Fabulous. Not right now. It's live. <laughs> Marriott Marquis <laughs> Resort. No, not really many of those. Mm. It's kind of a small hotel. <laughs> Actually, it's... Ten elevators? Oh, oh, ten, ten elevators, only a full city block. Uh, but uh, but beautiful. Nice to be here right in the heart of the Broadway Theater District at the historic uh, Booth Theater right there behind us. Uh, really a stunning vista out here of the uh, the Marriott Marquis. Or the yeah, I Marriott think the Marquis. folks listening in pure podcast line on the way to work are really enjoying that view right now. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Just Check wait it out on you YouTube it. later. Well, uh, we're here. Uh, it's nice to be back in New York. We're here with Love some frequency, right? Yeah, I, I think we spent over a year of days here uh, on and off, probably three to five days at a time for the last six, seven Seven years. That's right. A cumulative year <laughs> over time. But it's beautiful. Nice that it's not the freezing winter out there. Getting a little warmer. It's uh, it's warm. You know, walking around the city blocks, the nice summer heat, even the high 70s starts to starts to really, really beat down on you between mm-hmm. the brick walls and so on. It's warm. I mean, how hot do you think it is out there? <sighs> wow. It's uh, probably about as hot as a uh, freakishly furry fox flicking fleas in a forest fire. <laughs> That's wildly specific. But I, am, I appreciate that. Well, you ask the question, I give an answer. Hey, indeed. In fact, you over-delivered. Uh, we're here at the uh, actually 50th anniversary of the AAFPRS, American Academy of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, uh, here also along with the OFPSA. And uh, it's been a great meeting. Uh, we actually just got off stage, had a couple of talks today. Um, Nicely done, Ed. Hey, same to you, John. Really excellent. It's fantastic. I, I, we, did the, we did the live objection handling yep. workshop, which was a lot of fun. A uh, lot of witty banter. Objections. It's like a live podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's a witty repartee, uh, banter, overcoming objections, using the objections, like which we taught actually, I think, on our very first podcast. Mm-hmm. So we taught some uh, mm-hmm. great, great practice managers, doctors, and other uh, patient coordinators and folks that information, which was good. And then uh, what else we did? Uh, the, the best practice for the best practices talk. Indeed, which indeed. It's really great. sharing some of the things we've learned from the practices that, uh, that really, you know, sort of earn the most and sort of what's really made them the most successful. So it's been great. Success. It's been great. Um, in fact, we also do like to have a little bit of fun as well. We do. Like in fact, uh, we take the business pretty oh, seriously, hey. but we have the uh, yellow telescope, yellow teleballs that have Indeed. been uh, introduced at this meeting for the first time. They're stress balls and they turn from orange to yellow Kinda as your stress up. turns away. Indeed. Uh, the yellow telescope, yellow teleball. That's right. It turns from orange, stressful orange into a stress less yellow. That's what we do. It's amazing. So we also like to have a little bit of fun. How about that dinner last night? Wow. That was a dinner. Unreal. Bucket Tr- list. Near bucket list. Tr- r- r- redonkulous. R- r- truffle r- infused every dish. Unbelievable. It was like it was like a truffle fest. Like twelve dishes in a row, twelve courses, and uh, it was fantastic. Now it's. I, I would always say Le Bernardin. I, yeah, you but, would, uh, Mr. French over here. I, I would be the one to correct you and say it's Le Bernardin. Le Bernardin. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty good. It's guttural. Le Bernardin. It's guttural. Le Le Bernardin. Le. 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 It seems like in French you can almost just say one syllable in a strange, you know, just, just, <laughs> and that's pretty much the name of whatever it is you just ate, saw, or drank. Indeed. Escargot. <laughs> that, not bad. Is that good? Was not that good? Bad, I'm just actually. making it up. I speak Espanol. <laughs> Indeed. It was Muscle great. You know, unbelievable courses, you know, truffle, you know, Kobe, Wagyu beef, and so on. It was really a special, special meal. I mean, we drank some scotch. We had a few. I wouldn't say we, too many. It was a sampling, a veritable cornucopia I had cornucopia just a couple, but I think the group that we went with, we knocked out about half of the different scotches on the menu. It was pretty oh, exciting. Yeah, I started with the, uh, let's see, you actually started with the... I did the Highland Park, Highland 18, Park 18, which was uh, which was great. Really outstanding. I went with the uh, Glen Morangi 18. Uh, we also... Uh, let's see, ended up with the, 
Oh, what else did we have? You know, I think the best was actually right afterwards uh, was the Belveni 21 year old Portwood. The Belveni 21 year old Portwood, I just I tuned out there because I had some technical issues on my, on my microphone. So that may or may not be edited out, but look, we're transparent here and sometimes we have tech issues. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I had the Highland Park 18. We knocked out the Glen Morangi 18. A couple people having the McAllen 18s. The, 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 the highlight of the night was certainly the Belveni Portwood, which. Uh, which actually brings me to uh, today to the scotch of the scotch of the podcast. Yeah, that's a, that's a delicious. Yeah, so uh, today, uh, Ed, as you know, we're drinking it. We have the uh, Brook Laddick. Mm-hmm. Uh, they call it, they call it the Brook Laddie. The Brook Laddie uh, there, and uh, you know, I believe it, this is the the Laddie. Uh, it is the Laddie, and it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a single malt scotch. It's from Isla, uh, spelled Islay. And if you think of uh, of Scotland, it's sort of like Michigan, or or a hand where uh-huh. your thumb uh, is an island. And if you were to cut off your thumb at the base, the Ooh. little island that would be the tip of your thumb would be Isla. Uh, and there's only about eight distilleries there. This yep. one is the modern Hybridian distillery uh, because they tend to take more risks and chances and have more interesting things, including an unheard of unpeated or lightly peated scotch from Isla, which is unheard of. Wild. So this is kind of their classic. Uh, it's a 10-year-old. It's not mm-hmm. extremely fancy stuff, but very tasty, kind of refreshing and cool. Like the sort of mm. mint aquamarine bottle that you see, it sort of leaves a, uh, a refreshing, cool, somewhat spicy aftertaste. Mm. Um, I you like know, it. When I taste it, it's, it's, it's almost like just like a little air condition conditioning for my brain mm. that's nice mm-hmm. that's it's 72 nice. degrees in there it's nice <laughs> may i in fact oh absolutely do a little uh little wee dram oh absolutely you ready for a little more yeah a little, little topper wow we are early in the podcast a little well, topper it, it makes me think that we should uh you know we Get should talk about talk about something of, okay. uh, of a productive nature here in this Great. podcast so 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 uh, edward searing uh, the third el tercero indeed um you know last night we went to a beautiful place it's a place anybody would want to go if you like great food and you like great company sure and we had a team of about eight people there that came out several doctors facial plastic surgeons for the most part for this meeting since the afprs the american academy of facial plastic and research Surgery, 50th anniversary 11th symposium of international something or other greatness and uh, it was great and uh, you know nobody knows shows to lay burn you know lay burn done. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, go. one of the things I've noticed a lot of the doctors have challenges with is a show percentage. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, unfortunately, coming to your office isn't necessarily going to a 14-course amazing meal at no cost. No. not, not it's If it were, we'd probably much. have about a 99.9% show percentage. Mm-hmm. And, it's uh, not higher. Uh, it's something that, that really is consistent. So we were thinking about what are some tips on increasing show percentage in your practice, taking it to the highest levels. And, you know, I was just thinking, do I know somebody – who you know, averages over $3 million a year in personal sales, someone who closes 85% of all patients walking in the door before they leave, who gets over a 90% show rate year-round, year after year after year. And I uh, shockingly thought of you, Ed Searing. Oh, shucks. Shucks, John. And uh, so uh, is that like a good topic to you today? Let's do it. Uh, great. Let's talk a little bit about the psychology. Uh, yeah. That's usually where I come in and, uh, uh, you know, we we'll think John. about why people do anything, you know, why we do the podcast, why... Uh, we made yellow teleballs, why we drink scotch, why we go to work, why we do different things for our family. You know, the reality is everything that we do in life is either based on want or mm-hmm. it's based on need. Mm-hmm. For example, we might need uh, to show up to class or we might flunk out and lose out on a great career. Mm-hmm. We might want to sit front row in tonight's game six heat game against the stinky Indiana Pacers. Wouldn't it be nice? It'd be nice. And uh, unfortunately, we don't necessarily have that much to give to make it that desirable, but luckily we have enough to give to create sort of a want and a need in the mind of the patient to increase show percentage. Because if a patient were to get a million dollars to show up for their appointment, we would have a 100% show rate. Mm -hmm. If, however, uh, they were met by a hungry tiger, we probably have about a 0% show percentage (laughs) to the appointment. Or a so heck of a good is, time when they get there. <laughs> but <it's> okay. <laughs> uh, so the question is... Recreating the hangover part two or <laughs> yeah. one. Uh, so the question then is, how do we kind of create both a want and a need? Because if we can make the patient not only excited about the appointment, in other words, creating want, but also creating a little bit of obligation, a feeling of necessity of being there, then our show percentage are going to skyrocket. And in sales uh, mm-hmm. also then skyrockets. Because as we know, if they come in the door, if they meet the doctor, they're going to be pretty pleased with the, uh, with the outcome. And more often than not, we're going to be able to convert that patient into some sort of treatment or an advocate for the practice. So... Uh, you know, I'm not sure what ideas you have. Maybe I was thinking maybe you could give us a few of your tips that you're particularly using to get those kinds of show percentages. Yeah, I think there's a few simple things. I mean, we could probably, you know, do an entire separate 
three podcasts on this topic, but I, you know, I kind of think there are really four main things that really do uh, lead to AVOL creating the want, creating that need, sort of the obligation, and uh, just giving them the want to be there. I mean, when you're speaking to the patient, obviously when you have uh, somebody answering the phone, it's going to have somebody that's going to naturally build a very good rapport with that patient on the phone. Um, Hi, how are you? Uh, how are you doing today? Great. We're really looking forward to seeing you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as far as, uh, you know, you really want them to understand what they're going to be benefiting from when they get to the office. Um, you know, great. Well, when you get here, the doctor's really going to be spending a lot of great time with you, and we're going to go through all your um, uh, pluses and minuses of all the procedures and techniques, et cetera. Uh, there's also number three, uh, I would say, would be the, uh, the building of a uh, little bit of urgency or importance basically letting the patient know that the doctor is going to be taking out some of the time from his busy schedule to go ahead and uh, see that patient, take all the time that they need, um, and then build up the doctor, tell them, you know, of course, what a great guy or gal that they are, and uh, also um, gain a little bit of commitment, you know, towards the end of that, really firm it up and you know, suggest that um, that the patient actually lets it let you know if, if they can't make it. Great, you know, Barbara, if if, uh, if you can't make it, uh, would you be able to let us know? Go ahead and will you definitely give us a call when, when, if that would be okay with you? So you're saying that perhaps I might say, uh, you know, Barbara or Bob, standard, those mm -hmm. are the people that we somehow know on these podcasts, Barbara mm -hmm. and Bob. If you'd be uh, so kind. So I'd say, uh, 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 Bob um, or Barbara, uh, uh, please call me if there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Is that what I should say? I usually I'd like to soften a little bit and say, you know, if you'd be so kind, would you let us know if you can't make it? We understand things come up, but would you let us know? Okay, so we're actually asking permission in a sense. Asking permission. Is that to be nice? Well, I, we want to gain their commitment, I think, it. mostly. So it's a little bit polite, and that's why you're phrasing it that way, but you're also kind of not just getting a... Uh, not, not telling them or dictating, but rather... Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, one thing to say, hey, let me know if you can't make it, because everyone says, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but you say, hey, Bob... If you can't make it, would you be so kind as to let us know? I sure would. Everyone says yes. It's Very great. Nice. So then finally would be uh, just reminding them of the date and the time and uh, that you're really, really looking forward to seeing them. So to be as succinct as possible, you want to build some honest, really good rapport. Uh, tell, them what given, uh, tell them what to expect when they're going to be there. Let them know uh, what the benefits are going to be of the visit, how great the doctor is, how exclusive the time is, how busy the practice might be. Um, gain the commitment and to make sure that they're going to let you know if they cannot make it and then remind them of the date and the time. Okay, great. So could we do, would you run us through a couple of examples just to kind of put it all together? So Let's I basically do an getting, example. You we're getting a want, which uh -huh. is, you know, uh, it's going to be a great experience. You're going to love the doctor. Um, it's going to be a good appointment. We're nice people. We're down to earth. And then we're also kind of creating that obligation by gaining that commitment from them, making sure they're writing it down, making sure they're taking it seriously as well. Absolutely. So, okay, great. So should I be... Uh, Why don't I'll, you be the patient? Great. Uh, my name is Brooke Laddick. Can I call you, call you Laddie? You can call me Laddie. Okay, Laddie. <laughs> Great, Laddie. So uh, that 4 o'clock works for you next Wednesday? Uh, yeah, 4 o'clock on Wednesday should be perfect. Yeah, that sounds great. Great. Well, we're really, really looking forward to seeing you. And, of course, I just want to remind you of a few things. Um, the doctor is taking some time out of his busy schedule to meet with you. Of course, we'll take all the time you need. Where We have a wonderful, wonderful office, friendly staff, and you really feel welcome when you're here. Uh, okay. When you meet with the doctor, we're extremely thorough. We'll find out everything you need uh, or find out really what you're looking for as far as your goals are concerned uh, for uh, a cosmetic procedure. We may do some computer imaging. We'll talk about exactly what your that results are going to be. makes me feel very comfortable. Well, I appreciate that, and that's what we're here for. So you come in. We'll see you. We're very thorough. Make sure everything goes great for you. Great. And then, uh, of course, as I mentioned, we do have uh, a, a fairly busy schedule, okay. and uh, the doctor just has some limited time, but I have set aside some time uh, for you to see the doctor that day and for him to spend all the time he needs in order to help you feel comfortable with everything. Um, and, of course, because of that, if you can't make it, Laddie, would you be so kind as to just let us know? Oh, sure, of course. I'd, I'd never just, you know, not, not show up or great. something. I'm not That's that great. kind of guy, of course. We yeah. really, really appreciate it. I've always it. been a good lad. -y. <laughs> no? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good, thank you. Thanks, Laddie. So basically, uh, we look forward to seeing you. We really appreciate uh, you letting us know uh, if you can't make it. We really appreciate You like that? <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate it if you let us know. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Excellent. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, Wednesday at 4. Terrific. Thanks so much. You got it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Okay. See ya. Thanks.
Excellent. See you later. <laughs> nice. So there it is. I think that it's pretty succinct. Uh, they gain the commitment, and if nothing else, that that uh, that patient is now going to feel uh, both the want because of the wonderful service and the wonderful experience they're going to have when they're there, and the need and the obligation because they've committed to showing up. And if not, at the very minimum, letting you know they can't make it. And it seems like the two concepts are are, are somewhat interconnected, and in that obviously the more they like you, the more rapport that's built, mm -hmm. um, the more they feel they're going to gain value from the appointment and it's going to be fun and the people are nice, that also does create a little bit of a sense of obligation, just like we feel a little bit more obligated to a good friend to do something that we've promised to do than some we've never met before. And vice versa, through that creation of obligation, we're able to essentially drop hints and explain why we are creating this sense of obligation, which is the quality of the doctor. Right. The fact that we are taking some time out and that it is a great place and that people do like us and there is a sense of urgency. Um, so I really like those tips. Those are fantastic. I would actually describe them as well-received. <laughs> Sort of, sort of like a, like a FedEx. I would call it EdX. Ah, uh, <laughs> nice, nice. Is that my new nickname? Yes, All EdX. Right. There it is. Well Coins received on a podcast, <laughs> the Yellow Telecast, Volume Three. Very nice. Ed's very nice. well received. Um, great, man. Good information. Exciting information. Um, do we have any news this week? There's a little news. Okay, little a little news. bit I of fun medical news. I know that, fun. I know that most people, this. again, their go-to source for medical news in this industry is the Yellow Telescope, Yellow Telecast Best, Yellow Telecast Best Practices for the Best Practices podcast. We like short names. <laughs> 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 well, we actually came across this. John, John and I came across uh, from uh, Medical Economics dot modernmedicine.com. Apparently, they've got an app. It looks like it's been well-rated. Uh, what were the most Google searched symptoms oh God. of 2013? Wow. Of 2013. This is this podcast could get potentially uh, you know R rated. Well, potentially. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we like to keep it classy, <laughs> keep it clean. Uh, but so wait, just, just to clarify, these are so. I was reading this article to clarify this website or this group that uh -huh. conducted this study, they went to 70 different countries That's um, right. that had different Google searches, compiled all of the data on symptom searches. You know, I'm experiencing blank, you know, my, my underarm itches, <laughs> my knee armpit, which is sort of the backside of the kneecap, the knee armpit right back here, itches, uh -huh. you know, yep. those kinds of things. Now, <laughs> did either of those rank in the top 10 at all? <laughs> I like that you just checked that. I like, he's like, let me see if I just wanted those... to make sure. No, in fact, no, they, they weren't there. That would be extremely odd and sort of impressive if the that were the top case. Top 10, so. back of the knee, the knee pit itches. <laughs> the knee pit. There, the, I like that. It's better than the knee armpit. The knee pit? The knee pit. <laughs> so what's interesting is that there's actually uh, some weight to this because uh, one study that they, they source here said that 59% of adults look for health information online. It certainly feels like a lot more I than that. I don't see how it couldn't be 999 <laughs> Nine exactly. under the age of 80. <laughs> no, you go see a doctor, you're Googling them. You're Googling them right away. Uh, immediately. I wonder how his SEO is. <laughs> <laughs> He's up there. And 35% of patients have attempted to actually self-diagnose a medical condition from information on the I web. I also think that's at least 80%. Gotta be, at least. I'm self-diagnosing something right now. Yes. Not even a hypochondriac. <laughs> <laughs> Basically... 53% of physicians, apparently to a 2011 survey, felt that knowing more about symptoms using the internet is actually positive, while 20% of physicians found the increased access leads to misinformation and wrong self-diagnosis. That's which... also not shocking. I, my guess is that at least the patients that we see in so many of our practices, they are 100% sure that they are extremely well-informed, and 99.9% .9 of the time, they're extremely ill-informed, <laughs> usually because of the internet. And what's interesting, no offense to you wonderful doctors out there who are really our target market, that's what you want to do is really just insult your target market. That's what we do. But I've got to tell you, the physicians <laughs> themselves come in, you know, you'll have a radiologist come in and try to explain the exactly why, uh, you know, their particular... You know, Dermatitis. LAS LASIK surgery is, <laughs> LASIK. Uh, is, is done, a, done the incorrect way. So, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of misinformation. What's number one, though? I'm curious. What, what is the most searched symptom, which is what this is all about? Pregnancy. <laughs> As a symptom. <laughs> what are the symptoms of pregnancy? Correct. Well, I know the number one symptom. What's that? Babies. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a side effect? <laughs> well, I, it just seems to me that almost every time I see somebody get pregnant, they usually have a baby. Typically. We um, hope. Yeah. Is your belly unbelievably larger than it was before and you haven't been eating 
10 times as much food. <laughs> Tell us about your distended abdomen, because that's a pretty good sign. It's a Is there thing. something living inside your stomach, kicking you in the stomach? <laughs> you may be pregnant, or it's Alien 7. You can sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Or just sort of pregnant. You could be sort of pregnant, right? I think that's the old adage that you can't be partially pregnant. Huh. You are or aren't. So 100% of pregnant people are, in fact, pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the study. Number what two, else? influenza. <laughs> that's right. Really? Number two. Do I have the flu? Do it's I have the flu? Do you feel like a pile of garbage? <laughs> you may have. Do you are have... you sneezing? <laughs> and are you in bed? And do you crave... Do you have a, a matzo ball soup? A strange hankering for <laughs> chicken noodle soup, <laughs> potentially, to be held by your, by your mother or grandmother despite being in your mid to late 30s? <laughs> Are you cold every time you should be hot and hot every time you should be cold? Are you sweating through your blanket? <laughs> How about this? You may have the flu if you've watched six episodes of Maury Povich. <laughs> You suddenly have the time. <laughs> have you seen every episode of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West? What's that show called? <laughs> Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Keeping Up with the Kardashian Wests. <laughs> I believe it now is. Hey, not, not even hyphenated, I read. Um, that is silly. Do, still, I, do I have the flu? Finally, one more. Still within the top five. Anxiety. Uh, I, I, mean, I don't know. I get a little anxious thinking about it. Well, I think that if you go online and search for anything, it gives you anxiety. Right. You're like, do I have Asian bird flu? WebMD slash... Anything that comes up is just going to stress you out. You know, do I have SARS? <laughs> Immediate stress anxiety. First thing that's going to come up is just like sort of someone with like three heads and, you know, missing limbs and says, you know, this is what's going to happen to you. So if you have anxiety, the last thing you should do is search the symptoms of anxiety online. Because then they're all going to appear, and even the ones that haven't quite yet appeared, magically appear. <laughs> At least that's been my experience. This is fantastic <laughs> medical news. I, again, it's the only place I look to, look to get news these days. I've just given up on all traditional, so I only go to Ed Searing the Third. Hey, least I can do to keep you informed. <laughs> least I can do. So I think that brings us to the monthly nope. Nope. What? The monthly nope is nope. Come on. This is why. Why? It's a monthly yep. Yep. Well, you know, I just thought I didn't want to go down that negative path. I'm not a negative person. I'm a positive person. We're really turning thinker. things around here. And uh, we just figured, you know, we're in the big apple. Yep. You know, we're in the big uh, apple. <laughs> we're in the, the big easy. Now, that's New Orleans. We're the, in the big... The, the uh, city that never sleeps. Yeah, we're in the city that never sleeps. We're in the concrete jungle uh -huh. where dreams are made of. Made up? Made of. Made of. Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. That's, yep. that's the lyric from that song. That I makes no so. sense. So we're in the place where, where you can do anything, mm -hmm. anytime, anywhere. And we just thought it would be nice to kind of share a little bit of our experience in New York, give you guys some good suggestions. Well, we spent quite a bit of time here, as you mentioned, almost almost a home away from home, sort of the, the, the second HQ of YT. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've you know, really, over the last five, six years, we've had you know, a lot of great experiences here. Certainly have some favorites. Um, I mean... Yeah. And we, we kind of, I think what we try to think about is, well, let's, let's go into categories because sure. I find that almost every doctor every couple of years is going to be in New York for a conference. Mm -hmm. And a lot what are you of the staff do? members, ancillary team members come in, whether it's to see some Broadway shows or to bring their children in to see the sites, uh, uh, check out some of the new, you know, amazing memorials and so on that they have. The 9-11 the, uh, memorial is now open. That's right. It's supposed to be amazing. Haven't been yet. We'd like to go. Haven't. I agree. Um, and uh, so, you know, what are some things we like? But we want to compartmentalize. We're an organized people. Mm -hmm. uh, we take our job seriously. <laughs> We take the podcast incredibly unseriously, and we're very, very organized. Restaurants. Restaurants. Yeah, what else? Uh, nightlife? Nightlife. Uh, sites. Sure. Well, what, about, what about restaurants? I, I, uh, well, I think we've, we've talked plenty about Le Bernie. I think they made a few thousand dollars on this podcast alone. Got a list over here? Um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I did. I brought Shut up a couple a of thoughts. I mean, certainly off the top of my head, tonight we're going to Trey Dici Steak, which oh. is a great local place, family-owned. Ironically, straight above stairs. Above stairs? That doesn't sound right at all. It's right upstairs from Tradici, but Tradici steak, like a little uh, speakeasy style. Right, so like basically, you go to Tradici the restaurant, which is kind of uh, kind of Gramercy-ish area, mm -hmm. and uh, that's not the place, so that's good. Upstairs, through a very very questionable and shady staircase. As soon as you think you're entering elevator. someone's apartment, yeah, you basically enter a gorgeous Italian steakhouse, bordello style, beautiful red leather seats, a great date spot, nice little bar, and uh, famous I for the inside out meatball. Unbelievable. We keep going back. Yep, that's right. Imagine 
Well, you tell it best. Well, yeah. I mean, tell me about it this way. I mean, it's a well curated list we put together. Is what thirty thousand restaurants uh-huh. in town? Last time I counted, uh, whatever five thousand different sites. Sure. You know, give a, or a, take two thousand to twenty thousand bars. Mm-hmm. And uh, what did you do, Ed? Well, we tried them all <laughs> and uh, narrowed it down to an exhaustive list. And this is it. And so Tradici gets uh, gets a little bit of it up, but they've got the inside out meatball, which is basically flash fried on the outside, sort of sauteed delicious century meatball and infused and in, I don't even know how they put it mozzarella is okay. on the inside you cut it in half splits in half Oof. and out comes the melty oozy cheesy mozzarella mozzarella, mozzarella. it's low fat it's yes no you know what else is no. Luger's oh Luger's if you haven't been to Peter Luger's just over the Brooklyn Bridge you got the sliced steak going on mm-hmm. uh, the uh, the Canadian bacon you actually order one piece of bacon as an appetizer if you go there and don't order a piece of bacon and you do not keep kosher you've committed it you, you could be you can be imprisoned yep absolutely what else oh my gosh uh what about the halal truck <laughs> Halal guys on what is it, fifty third and six? Yeah, Avenue of the Americas, the right in front of the Hilton, of right in front of the Hilton. Ugh, it is amazing. Great halal food. Uh, Twenty four hours a day, there's a line out the door for that place, and it's really just a food truck on the street. It's a great place to go to to have some late night eats. You know, under five dollars. It's enough food to feed a family, and it's really good. And their spicy sauce. Woo! Oh, that'll heat you up. <laughs> Jambalaya. Cure what ails you. Oh, it'll it'll eat through your stomach. <laughs> It will, it will light you up. In sort of in the same vein of mm-hmm. the halal track, Thomas Keller's Per Se. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you guys who haven't been to Per Se, Ed and I uh, enjoyed it with my wife. It was, it was fantastic. You know, Per Se Bucket is list. probably top Checked five in America. Uh, you know, one of these just insane, I mean, not, not for the budget conscious, but a great once in a lifetime bucket list experience. Ed said, you're talking about 18 different courses and so on. And mm-hmm. I'm still was, paying off. Pay oh, off the bill. Yeah, you take a mortgage out, it's fine. Fabulous. Uh, it was great. Uh, yeah, you've got other little places, places like Graffiti, Look It Up, a communal seating. Uh, you've got, uh, uh, what else? What else is good? Yeah, there's, so, there's so many. Uh, oh, any, I mean, Baloo at the uh, the Surrey. Oh, the Surrey. Well, that, that may lead into hotels, by the way. May. Uh, Baloo, you know, there's so many. You've got Colicchio's, and you've got, uh, 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 what's the one? Summer, winter, spring, fall? Oh, yeah, Park Avenue Spring. Yeah, Park Avenue Spring, at and least that, right now it would be. Did that for Mom's birthday. Name. Oh, yeah, that Love was you, great. Mom. And Searing. That's right. A saint. Mm-hmm. A ceiling-breaking superstar. Just gets younger every year. I don't know it's how she does It's fantastic. It. It's amazing. Um, I spend every one of her birthdays with her. That's right. At least for the last two. Not even coincidentally, <laughs> it's becoming a pattern. Let's talk real briefly. Let's go through a couple of hotels, uh, a couple of uh, you know, Surrey. Surrey. High-end, amazing, Upper East Side. It's the place to be. I like it better Queen, than the Ritz. I like it better than the Plaza. I like it better than the Mandarin. Yep. Barely better than the Mandarin, but I like it better than the Mandarin. Just amazing little boutique hotel. You're right off of Fifth and Park, and you just go shopping, and you blow your millions, and it's amazing. <laughs> what about something a little more budget conscious? Oh, I mean, not necessarily budget conscious, but sort of different little end of the spectrum. I like the Jade mm. the Village. Yeah, the Village is really my spot. If I had a choice of a place to stay and really explore, I like, I like the Village. Uh, East Village is fun. West Village is even better, in my opinion. Both mm-hmm. great places. So much fun. You got the art galleries. You got the food. You got great shopping. You have cool people. Uh, wonderful little bars and nightlife and so on. It's just great. The Jade is the spot for me. You know, it nice really enough is. without being outrageously priced. Yep. Um, what else? Uh, nightlife, uh, sights. Uh, oh, sights. Uh, Ed and I went to the Statue of Liberty <laughs> just together on a boat. It's great. Just it's holding great. hands. Should have done a just podcast. Just having a great time. We should have. It was a fabulous fall day. Yeah, you, you go to New York 12 times a year for like three years, and you never go sightseeing. And never it was just one it. of the things you had to check off. It was really, you know, really is one of the few things I've done in my life where I get just an even greater pride in my country and get yeah. all nostalgic and stuff. Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's fun taking the boat ride. I mean, a lot of people forget about what an active waterfront New York City has here. Uh, and it just miles and miles of coastline. Take the ferry right out of Battery Park. Head down to the island. Yeah. And it's just a great the view Ellis of the Island city. part, I mean, obviously it's an amazing thing culturally and historically. I'm not sure it's as, as fun and interesting and beautiful is the statue but just a mm-hmm. great trip and, and the boat trip alone is worth it worth the price of admission just to see the whole city skyline um the new 911 towers and so on are just fantastic um finally you know, moma is is ed spot oh that i mean talk about air conditioning for the brain <laughs> 
I was there, uh, I don't know, probably a few months back, just had a couple hours before I had to get the flight home and was just committed to seeing what was going on. Uh, just, I mean, everything, I mean, all the greats, they had this fantastic uh, Le Corbusier. Uh, no, of course, leave it to yeah, me. I stood at a Rothko for about 45 minutes just to see what it would be like. I just thought maybe something would happen. <laughs> I kind of got to the point where it convinced me I liked it. Yep even though it was just one color. It's a risk, I think, as your grandmother would say. Maybe a color and a half. Risk of getting a headache. Yeah. And it's interesting that that's like worth like a gajillion dollars next to the dolly that was there, at least on display at the time I was there. Uh -huh. And that's, of course, you know, my generation. I think we love the dolly because it's just unbelievable. Like, what? how come that staircase is going up and down and sideways at the same time? But it's amazing, uh, uh, the, the artwork there. Um, you know, other sites, there's so, there's so many things to do. Top of the Rock, going to go and ice skating. There's a million things you can do. But those are two or three that if I've just got a two or three day trip, I'm going to knock out. That's my favorite museum favorite big yep. giant site uh, and so on um, last would be a little nightlife as far as the whiskey aficionados the watering miss in one of the best whiskey towns in uh, probably the world and certainly America got some great ones you know my my personal favorite just kind of for an after dinner drink is Highlands Unbelievable Highlands scotch menu nice yep. place always packed nice people good food as well even good for a happy hour we dram after work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what do you like uh, I, I think one of my favorites is Angel Share mm. Yeah, Angel Japanese share. whiskey bar. Yeah, exactly. Kind of very, very niche. We've got definitely got a Japanese whiskey it's coming a up on a future podcast. too. I mean, we walked around yep. for about forty minutes looking for it, but it's yep. worth the worth the trip over over out east and east and south. Head to upstairs, find it. make a reservation for sure. Of course, they will not seat a table of more than four, and they will only seat you if you're all there. Uh, but really fantastic menu, uh, really creative cocktails. I remember Super the crafty whiskey. Remember the uh, the smoky cinnamon where they had the piece. It is light cinnamon on fire. Light cinnamon under the glass to trap Upside it. down glass. Turn the glass over, pour the cocktail in so you get the wow, whole. It almost like added its own kind of peaty smoke flavor to an unpeated whiskey. It was just amazing. Silliness. Gaff West for darts. Uh, Gaff West, dive bar, good beer, great place to throw some darts. Yep. Yeah, I get better after a couple of beers. Ed gets progressively worse. I get worse. Somehow the second game is the closest, and then we just sort of cross paths somehow. Yeah. Oh. I win the first and lose the last. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more ideas. Email us at info at yellowtelescope.com for more ideas on what to do in New York or pretty much any city, anywhere, because we've been to damn near every one of them. And we're hoping to check out the rest. Absolutely. Well, we're broadcasting next time, uh, just in a couple short weeks uh, on June uh, 18th, 19th, or 20th mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. We may even be broadcasting from either one of the great hotels we're staying Ooh, in, the Cosmopolitan the or Bellagio. The fabulous Bellagio Resort and <laughs> Casino. Or we may even be broadcasting from Whiskey Attic, the largest collection of whiskeys in the world, uh, off the strip, curated by a UNLV professor and master sommelier kind of whiskey guy. So it's going to be pretty exciting. Isn't so that a class Should we talk like about some upcoming things and wrap this puppy up, get people back to work? Absolutely. We'll be in Vegas uh, coming up soon. Uh, of course, don't forget about the October seminar. Check out yellowtelescope.com for tons of great information. Please sign up for, for the podcast if you're watching this online. Uh, subscribe to the newsletter, the blog, tons of great articles, videos. Everything's great on there. So, And just to not to put too fine a point on it, Sam, the only bee in your bonnet. It's a quote. <laughs> it I won't is now. tell you from who. Email me where that quote is from, and you will win a prize. But uh, not to put too fine a, uh, too fine a point on it, um, yeah, the podcast. Obviously, you're already listening to this, so many of you guys have already subscribed to it and downloaded it. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure you subscribe. That really helps us out. That way you get notifications when the next one comes out. Listen to as many as you can. Uh, make sure you rate us highly. Give us some five stars. Give us some positive comments. If there's some negative comments, email them, for goodness sake. Don't just put them right on there. That's just mean. We're nice people. We try hard. <laughs> We're, We're trying, This is free. Man. You didn't pay anything. What do you expect? My <laughs> goodness. Give us a little credit here. <laughs> And uh, But uh, if you're watching in podcast land on YouTube uh, or through our website, make sure you download it to your tablet, uh, any Google Play store, any app store, any iTunes store. Uh, you can download this bad boy and get it, which would be really, really great, and we appreciate that. Um, definitely the October 10th and 11th training seminar is coming up. Mark it's already it outsold last year's by far, ranked a 9.71 out of 10 based on anonymous reviews, so everybody loves it. It's not the best meme you've ever been to in your whole life. You're going to get all your money back, and we're still running a little bit of a special through June 20th. You can save $1,000 off your next, uh, uh, next year's event if you sign up before June 20th. Plus, you can break it into payments. It's really a win-win, 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 lose-win, win-win. <laughs> win. 
Uh, what else do we have coming up? I think that we've got the October seminar. We've got Vegas for those going out to multi-specialty meeting. We just got back from the cosmetic dentistry meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be in November, e December yep. going out to the Florida ENT event. That's right. Uh, which is going to be well attended mm -hmm. and possibly well well received like edX. <laughs> it's going to be edX. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what can Ed do for you? That's UPS. I guess. Uh, we can wrap case, it up. We're really excited. I think we're basically done. Those are my thoughts. Again, email us with any questions at info at yellowtelescope.com. Check out the website for all kinds of past issues of the blog, uh, podcasts, speeches, and articles, as Ed has already edXed us. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, we've probably, as usual, had a little bit more fun than we should have. But, uh, hey. That's a big dram. I we're, just forged it. Hey, hey. Better, better than not enough. <laughs> Either way, uh, cheers to you, John. As they say, everything in excess. Is that, no. <laughs> no, that's not Moderation. what they say. Moderation. We're heading to Tradici. Take care. Mm. Better finish than the start. <laughs> <laughs> Up there.